Thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. Artificial intelligence is taking over the world. I don't know about you, but my Instagram reels have been bombarded with the cool things that AI is doing out there in the internet. Chat GPT, ask it questions, give it prompts, and it will pump out for you exactly what you're looking for. Mid Journey can randomly generate an image for you based on a prompt that you give it. Descript can automatically transcribe videos for you. A cool one that I just found is called Synthesia, which can actually create a synthetic AI person to do talking head videos for you. This entire intro is actually AI generated. No, I'm, I, I'm kidding. This is me. This isn't AI. This, this is real. This is real. Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller and today I'm going to talk to you about the powerful tool that Adobe has put out, Podcast Enhance. Have you heard of this thing? Have you used this thing? Want to know how powerful it is? This mic isn't even plugged in. I have been using my on-camera mic this entire time. <laughs> I don't know about you, but getting crystal clear audio has always been a struggle for me. When do you use this plugin or that plugin? How do you use EQ? What what knobs and what what levers do you pull up and down to make stuff sound correct? And that's in a room that there is no noise, there is no reverb, there is no echo. What do you then do if you're adding wind into that or a massive, massive echo from a huge room? That is where Adobe Podcast Enhance can help you out. You can take audio that was recorded well, but there's background noise, or you can take audio that was recorded well and even enhance it a little bit further. A couple of things to touch on about Adobe's Podcast Enhance. Number one, you have to be a Creative Cloud subscriber to get it. The next thing is that this is not a end all be all solution to recording bad audio. If you are recording audio bad, this might not save your bacon and I'll show you a few examples here in a second. Make sure that you are still recording audio correctly. Get the mic close. Make sure you have a clean feed. All of the stuff that you have always done. Just because we have this amazing technology doesn't mean that we get to be lazy. The two areas that I have found where Adobe Enhance really excels is going to be with some gentle wind noise, just some nature uh, kind of noise, and then with some reverb. Last year we went to Glacier National Park and filmed a wedding and they did the first look outside on the side of the mountain. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was incredible. However, the bride's mic was a little softer and it was a little bit windy and so it was really difficult and tough to hear her. So I ran her audio through Adobe Enhance and it worked out like a charm. You make me feel full. You lift weight off my shoulders when I didn't know there was weight to be lifted. Also in situations where maybe you're doing a talking head video or you're reading a letter and uh, it's just really uh, reverby. The room echo is really, really strong. I have found great success using Adobe Enhance in these situations. Hi, I'm Sam Jacobson. I'm a sales pricing and copywriting expert for wedding professionals all around the world in different fields. Here in a second, I'm gonna show you my process for using Adobe's Podcast Enhance, but I wanted to share with you a couple of places where this software has a tough time figuring out what is going on. The first is going to be people shouting in the background during toasts or cheering or something like that. I was recording a toast one time and while the maid of honor was speaking, some people were kind of talking and the AI pulled in their voices and it jumbled it up and it sounded really, really weird. That comes the past I remember thinking. The other situation is whenever people get really emotional and kind of get sniffly and mumble over their words, like their words are not really, really clear. So the AI is using their voice and kind of trying to figure out what it is that they're actually saying. I truly believe God places what you need in your life when you need it the most. It's winning me with any of you. Whenever this is a situation, I found that it's just better to use the natural recorded file rather than the enhanced version. The last thing I wanna throw out there is that you shouldn't just run your audio through Adobe Enhance, make sure it sounds good, and then put it in your film and send it on the way. Typically, the audio sounds like it was a studio recording. It is meant for podcasters, and so typically the voice, it sounds like it maybe doesn't sit within the film. It sounds too good, it sounds too clean, it sounds too crisp. Especially with female voices, it's bringing up that bass in the voice. So you're going to want to EQ it and mess with it, maybe add a little reverb. You're going to want to do something to the audio before you send it off to your client. 
I want to take a quick break and talk about the sponsors of this video, Musicbed. With over 1,000 curated bands, artists, and composers, Musicbed is the exclusive licensing platform John and I use for our wedding films. Choose from over 40,000 songs from incredible artists like Secret Nation, Penny and Sparrow, and Tony Anderson. The website and app have been created with the wedding filmmaker in mind. Find the perfect song every time with robust search features like genre, mood, and my favorite, key. Don't know exactly what you're looking for? Check out Musicbed's curated playlists like cinematic vocals, singer-songwriter, or one of my go-tos, indie folk. Still can't find what you're looking for? Reach out to the Musicbed staff for their complimentary song search. Take your projects and wedding films to the next level with Musicbed. Sign up for a free account and hear the difference yourself. Use promo code HTFW23 for one month off an annual subscription. Your journey to the best music for your wedding films is one click away with Musicbed. Now I'd like to walk you through my process of using Adobe's Podcast Enhance in my wedding films. I don't use this software until my film is done and set. This is typically the last step that I take because it does take a little extra time than it normally would with just using the internal tools built into Adobe Premiere. After the film is locked, I will put the dialogue onto one or two tracks, solo those tracks, and then click export. For my export settings, I am doing audio only at Wave at 32-bit float. I will then go over to podcast.adobe.com slash enhance, make sure I'm signed in, and upload this file into the enhance software. Depending on how long or how complex it is, it can take up to 10 minutes to render this file out. Whenever you are finished, you have the ability to toggle on and off the dialog so that you can listen to it, and then you can also download. I will import the enhanced audio back into my Premiere project file and make the cuts where they are on the timeline. For example, all of the groom dialogue, I will make a cut where he starts and where he ends, bride, maid of honor, any of that spoken dialogue, I make cuts where they are in the original timeline. Side note, I don't recommend deleting all of your original audio. I did that on my very first project working with Adobe Enhance and there was a mess up, so it took me a while to find that audio again. All you need to do, go in, unenable the audio file, pull the track all the way down to the bottom, and then it will be out of sight and out of mind. Listen to your dialogue. After applying Adobe Enhance, it's gonna make it sound more uh, studio. So those, those bass notes, those lower end notes are gonna be a little bit more full. You might wanna add an equalizer and mess with the Hertz in the 50 to 250 range. Play with those a little bit and see if you can get something that might sound a little bit more natural. After I've added the EQ to my track, I will then add my compressor and make sure I get that the audio levels are where I want them to be. Another thing you can do to the audio enhance file is add a little bit of reverb. But whenever you put just a little bit on there, it can make the speaker sound like they are in a room, they are in a place where there would be reverb and it doesn't sound so polished and clean. After I EQ, compress, and add just a little bit of reverb, I then go and add my limiter to the entire film export it out and I am good to go. So there you have it, my process for using Adobe Enhance on my wedding films. Yes, it can take a little extra time and there are extra steps included, However, whenever you have speeches or you have things where it didn't work out great with the DJ or your microphone cut out and you have to use your on-camera mic, Adobe Enhance can be a solution to a problem that you are having. Again, this does not negate you having to record good, clean audio as best as you can, but if you get in a pinch and you get in a bind, it can definitely help you out. So let us know in the comments, have you used Adobe Enhance? Is this something that you are interested in? Do you want to check it out. What is your process for using this? Are you using it on all of the dialogue in your film or just those problem uh, pieces that you can't seem to figure out on your own? Once again, thank you to Musicbed for sponsoring this video. If you are interested in the best music licensing platform for wedding films, we highly recommend Musicbed. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed, use promo code HTFW23 to get one month free off of any annual subscription. Guys, it has been a pleasure hanging out with you. I hope that this information was helpful to you. And until next time, we will see ya.